Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara, and today, let there be peas on earth, and let it begin with Lawn Fawn. So this is peas on earth, the stamp set, and the largest outside-in stitched rectangle and circle. So I'm going to start by masking. I just cut the circle out of regular cardstock and put some temporary adhesive on the back so I can now use the negative part of it and create the earth. Now I am not going to worry about uh, making this really look like earth because uh, that's just uh, if I wanted to do that, and if you want to do that, I would take a photo of the earth or a picture and put it behind my paper and then kind of follow along with that. But really, this is just giving us the idea of earth. And uh, I'm just using Distress Ink. I'm starting with Shabby Shutters. And I'm looking over to the side because this is a recreation of a card that I made for Inspiration Week. And I just wanted to show you how I created it. And so I thought, well, I'll use it as my example. And so I'm taking some mowed lawn now and just uh, coming in and trying to darken up those continents. And sorry, Australia, you're on the other side of the earth on this shot so I miss you but um, you can kind of see <laughs> I'm making uh, Europe over here and we've got South America and North America <laughs> and then there's Africa down in the in the right hand corner but now it's time to come in with the ocean and so I'm using salty ocean which is so appropriate for this and just coming in and the nice thing about putting in the blue with the green is that they can kind of mix and that's how I kind of clean up the continents to, so they're not just blobs I guess is by uh, switching from the green to the blue to kind of get those edges a little crisper. This is a finger dauber that I'm using to spread the ink around or blend it. You could also probably use a small blending brush as well, but I found that this gave me the control that I was looking for. And I start pretty light everywhere until I feel comfortable with what I'm putting down and then I can come in and darken things up and just keep layering my, my inks. I darkened up all the insides of the continents and now I'm coming back with my salty ocean to try to kind of blend them together, give them those edges I was talking about. Now, I grew up in the era in the U.S. where geography really wasn't uh, stressed as, as a class. Uh, so I'm, I, I don't know, I'm not good. Like, I don't know where certain places are, like Bulgaria. I'm sorry, I, I wish I did. I should probably go back and, and really uh, learn that. So I don't know if it's changed now, but I don't know that my kids know where Bulgaria is either. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I did get them a globe as as little kids. I thought, oh, we're gonna we're gonna knock this out of the park. We're gonna figure out where everything is, and it was kind of one of those interactive game type globes. But mm, uh, I don't even know where it is anymore. <laughs> well, you can see that I'm getting a little bolder with my color, so getting it darker on there. I'm kind of happy with how the edges are looking, and so I'm just kind of filling it in, making sure that I, I like the, the depth of the color of the ocean and trying to uh, get Florida to show up there, I guess. <laughs> I did try to put uh, uh, the British Isles up there, but I, th I think they got blended away. Sorry about that. All right, so now we're done and it can lift off the mask which is the fun part, the big reveal, and there it is, our earth is ready. And here are our peas on top of the earth. I'm just positioning where I want them. And then I'm going to ink them up with Lawn Fawn's Jellyfish ink, because I want to give them a bit of the no-line color look, but I did kind of stamp them out a little dark for no-line coloring. You could 
definitely make those lighter, but I thought it would be nice to have them show up so you could see them. And then inked up that lantern in the jet black. And now I'm going to use some clear ink. So getting my de-static pad out there and inking that up in clear ink. And I'm going to heat emboss that with Lawn Fawn's white embossing powder. So this is a sentiment from the set and it says peas on earth. And I sprinkled on the embossing powder and I will heat that and melt it off camera. Now I also want to put some music notes on there because these peas are singing. And so I'm using another stamp from that set and just stamping it down with my uh, acrylic block. So just looking over to the side to see how I positioned them on my first card. But you will find <laughs> this is like one of those games where what tell the differences between the two pictures because uh there are some differences on these two cards you, you know no card is as alike but one of the things i did was i did not put the exclamation point on there and uh i do like the exclamation point that's in the set as well well here i am stamping the peas and lantern on a uh, post-it note. This is a full sticky back post-it, so I'm going to cut those out and use them as masks. Now I don't have to cut all of it out because some of them are just lines and so they would uh, show the background behind them. So like their little feet and that top of his earmuffs. And so now I can just put those masks on everything. I might not have had to put the lantern mask on there. That's kind of up to you. I uh, could probably get away with it, but I did it anyway. And then I took the positive part of that circle mask that I made, and I'm uh, adding that. And now I'm using a life-changing blender brush to ink blend outer space. And I'm starting with faded jeans and just going very lightly. And two reasons I'm going lightly here. One, I probably need to re-ink my faded jeans. And secondly, I want there to be kind of a glow coming from that lantern that highlights those peas. And then I can get darker with the chip sapphire and I'm going all around the edges. Really want to bring out the embossing now I'm going to speed up the ink blending so that you can watch what's going on, but it doesn't have to take too long. And I'm just going back and forth between the chip sapphire and the black soot. So the black gives me that, well, obviously, that black outer space look, but adding back in the chip sapphire kind of gives it a, a good blue look to it. I don't know. I like the two together and, and really just going back and forth with both of them. I love these peas. Uh, I just think this was this this is one of my favorites. Is uh, this and the other pea set the ha be happy? Uh, who knew peas could be so punny? <laughs> but oh peas! Oh, no, okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, <laughs> coming in with the faded jeans just to round it out over by where those peas are, and then uh, one last come back with the black and. Uh, this background is pretty much done, but I want to have some stars out there in space. So I'm going to take some acrylic white paint and add a little water to it. I'm going to pick it up with a stiff brush. Now this is just an old brush I have, and uh, I, I don't know. I always test out my speckling first, but uh, you know, the funny thing about speckling for me is... Uh, I speckle and it gets everywhere. I mean, I'll find it three feet away from me, but does it get where I want it on the card? No, so <laughs> I don't know. This time it worked out pretty well and I can take all the masks off now. And those peas look a little funny because they have that kind of no line coloring look to them, but they'll, they'll turn into good piece there. So I'm just taking a paper towel and wiping off my ink, the uh, distress ink, from the top of my white embossing. And I found that if I take my zero Copic marker, the ink blend, the blender of the 
Copics and just go over that embossing. It, it does pick up more of that ink. I kind of wipe it off to the side so that it doesn't uh, stay on my marker. And then I'll come in and do the same with the music notes too. It just whitens them up a little bit more. Then I can take my outside in stitched rectangle and run that through my die cutting machine and that's all cut out. And here it is next to the other one, but time to color up our peas. So I'm using Copic markers for this and I'm starting with a YG21, just filling in all the part that's the P. And I don't have too much coloring to do on this one, but uh, I want to make them look like they have a bit of glow from that lantern. So we're going to work on that as well. So the shadow is going to come from uh, the outer parts of both of the P's. So this is a YG23, and I'm creating those shadow areas there. And now the, the two together don't, uh, they're a little bit far apart. So I like to use the tip to tip method to get them to blend a little bit better. And so just get them, I, I'm moving my paper too, so that I can uh, blend at an angle that just seems to work for me. Uh, so that's why my paper gets moved around a bit and just kind of getting it all blended in. So these peas are on top of the world. <laughs> So looking down on creation, but uh, they are uh, up in the Arctic. So uh, I'm guessing they're uh, snow peas. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, frozen peas. Anyway, okay. Well, <laughs> they're not French peas. Oh, there's just, there's too much uh, material here. Anyway, <laughs> so coloring up these peas, getting in the glow to the lantern and bringing it out a little bit. And then I want to add it to the edges of my peas so that they look like they're getting a little of the glow. Not too much, just to kind of get that effect there. And then uh, once I have that, I can darken up inside that lantern a little bit, make it just look a little more substantial. And then, okay, for this one, a little different than the other one, I thought maybe it'd be nice to give it a little... Um, angle to the glow. So uh, just ink blending at the edges of that lantern, I don't know that it did anything, but you know, you got to try these different things. How do you know if you don't try? So now to get the uh, music books, the Christmas carols colored. I'm saying that it's going to be darker on the outside edges, but also where that book uh, sort of folds out. And so I'm getting near the spine of the book and then bringing it out from there. And I'm defining it on both sides. And also this little guy's hat because he has a white trim and pom-pom. And just going back and forth with the um, cool grays here. Uh, I think my darkest was that C2. And then just blending things out when the lightest is the C00. So the two, one, zero, and zero, zero. And just keep going back and forth, like you see. And I even sped this up a little because eh, it, it, it really is just going back and forth. I have the R21 for the hat and the ear muffs, and these are gonna be red, but uh, they're gonna kind of be pink near the light. So I started with that light color, and then I'm coming in with the R22 moving up to the R35 and then the R39. So a real uh, gradation there from very dark to light up by the lantern. I'm blending that in back and forth a bit and uh, making sure that there's kind of a smooth transition there. All right, just giving a little more darkness to the sides of the peas. Now that everything is colored, I can kind of see where I can put in a little extra shadow. And it's time to put those feet back in and all the little details. So I'm looking over to the side at my other card, but also could look at the packaging. Or I could, if I was uh, smart, I would have left those peas in the misty and <laughs> just... I don't know if I could just restamp that. I guess I could have masked 
those back up and I would have gotten the legs, but uh, this works easiest for me just to look at where those lines are and I can faintly see the lines still on my paper so I can kind of follow that. Now I thought I would do uh, the band in black but it decided to move to red and this is just a zig writer it's a it's a water-based marker and so I just connecting that ever so slowly so <laughs> I don't make a mistake and time to put those faces on and these faces come in the set too they're just they're hilarious I love them singing uh, and I'm using black licorice for this it's a nice deep black color and you can see I even made those a little, uh, I stamped them a little with a little more pressure than on the other one so that they show up a little thicker on, on this card. Put some adhesive on the back and put it on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And I'm looking at the two together just to kind of see if there's anything I want to change. And I decided to ink blend a little more green in there darken up those continents and this card is all done i hope you enjoyed the video today and that it inspired you to spread a little peas on earth thanks for watching and have a great day bye